Hello and a warm welcome to The Sim Hanger. My name's Mark, The Sim Hanger for all things flight sim related. And Microsoft Fire Sobo Studios have released episode 8 IFR in the feature discovery series on Microsoft Flight Simulator. So let's have a dig in and let's get started. This episode was hosted by Damien Kuzak, lead design for Sobo Studios. And following their earlier announcement, he confirmed NavBlue will be supplying the navigational data for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And that this data will be updated on the AIRX cycle every 28 days. I can only assume at this time this will be part of a monthly update for the simulator. The data will include VORs, NDBs and other waypoints, airspace classifications as well as updating SIDs and STARS for the various airports. I really like the graphical interface making it quick and simple for flight planning. As part of your preparation and flight planning you can decide whether you're going to start on the runway, at the terminal or airborne, cold and dark or with engines running. The navigational database is fully featured including high and low airways. Suitable for VFR and IFR, of course. Choose your departure airport as well as a suitable standard instrument departure. And the same for your arrival airport with the suitable star. Route options include direct or waypoint to waypoint or following the various airways. If you prefer, while well, put in your departure and arrival airport, type of flight that you want and route and it'll log that in for you. You do, of course, have the option to edit as needed. Asobo also announced it will be able to interface with third-party planning programs. Microsoft Flight Simulator flight planning seems fairly comprehensive. You can load or save your flight plans to the navlog as needed, as well as an option to import other flight plans from the community. If you're not too familiar with flight planning, that's a great option to get started. In summary, more comprehensive than other simulators. Once you're happy with your flight plan, it can be exported directly into the instruments in the cockpit. I can hear Simmers now saying, Thank you Microsoft, you've just saved me 10 minutes of my life per flight. If you want to plan the flight plan directly in the cockpit, well of course you're free to do so. Depending on the aircraft you're flying, of course you've got a wide variety of navigational instruments at your disposal. For the Garmin, you've got the 430 and the 530, as well as the G1000, 3000 and 5000. For airliners equipped with an FMS, there's the CDU or MCDU. Everything's available for your pre-flight preparation. This includes radio communications and performance data. Once again, flight plans can be imported into the module. ILS approaches are supported for precision runway approaches with both vertical and horizontal guidance and the radios support 8.33 kHz tuning to allow you to tune into the modern frequencies. Microsoft Flight Simulator features a fully blown menu driven ATC. Start off with the ground to get your clearance and it'll hand you over to tower for departure from the airport on the runway. But not only is it handling just you, but it's also handling any of the other traffic or AI traffic in and around your vicinity. Dependent on the aircraft you're flying, then the systems will support complete navigational control through autopilots and so on. The use of the ATC function is of course optional, but does add to the immersion. Decimal 9R2. Airbus 320, climb and maintain 10,000 feet. Continue to Yankee, Victor, Romeo, turning and following heading 200. Resume on navigation, climb and maintain 10,000 feet. Airbus 320. If you're too busy flying the aircraft, you do have the option to hand over the ATC control and responses to your co-pilot, your AI co-pilot. Aspects for weather radar such as range and ceiling are also configurable. One theme throughout this episode has been what is optional third-party products in other sims is standard in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Well, we're now on final and we've been vectored for final approach. 
as will the AI aircraft around you. They will also get their vectors. Make sure you get clearance, otherwise you may find something unexpected sitting on the runway. AI traffic around you will act intelligently, including going for go-arounds. Just as in real life, once you've got clearance, you should expect it all to be clear ahead of you. Well, I must say that's looking very interesting, very comprehensive, and I'm continually surprised at the scope that Microsoft Flight Simulator is going to have when it launches. In other Microsoft Flight Sim news, well, the next in this series is going to be on partnerships. That's going to be interesting. And also there's an alpha update, as well as new alpha invites going out. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you found this useful and informative. Hope to see you all again very soon and bye for now.